HA200. Uh, reappearing for the first time in a while, the Great O'Hemps now with the uh, Shippebo uh, headset, cradle, and pads. So I'll link to those. There's a fullish review coming of those when I do the other two Grados. This, you have to excuse the desk. The desk has sort of evolved over here in uh, Tube Week, Tube Amp Week, whatever the hell I'm calling it. Uh, where I started with the X2O, then moved to the Miltra, and now I'm on a motherfucking Macintosh. So, this is only the second Macintosh product I've ever reviewed on Zero Reviews. The first one was a pile of shit headphone made by Macintosh, called the Macintosh Headphone 1000 or something. And it sounded like ass, and it was built like ass, but the wire was really nice. Because Macintosh shouldn't make headphones. Macintosh is known for one thing. Macintosh is known for... Oh, I did not screw it enough. Pull out the 22-year-old screwdriver. Let's see if I can get this actually off. Macintosh is known for their amplifiers. Specifically, or at least as specifically as you want to get, their tube amplifiers. Like, if you go by a yard sale and you're not looking for Macintosh amps just sitting in a, in a yard sale somewhere, you're not an audiophile. So this has this protective cage over it, which I've kept on because... Life happens, and then it destroys things. There we go. So let's take this nice cage off and put it up here. Good. Ta-da! Tubes. Um, underlit green tubes with green LEDs. Uh, we have to talk about the two gemstones in the title. You see, we started out with like $320. Decent. Very good tube amp. Holy shit. Moved on to the Miltra, which is uh, roughly $700 US if you picked one up. And this is 2500 So the reason this is the only reason I'm doing tube week, because I can I could do pretty big chunks. Like everyone can pretty much set their sights on the X2O and afford it. If you want to go a little bit fancier, a little bit more European, you want to get you know LEDs, you want to get some nicer aesthetics, you go with the Miltra. And then this is the one that everyone's gonna be like, oh, oh my god, I need I need it. Why is there gray tack on this ZLS? Why did you hunk a wad of poster tack to that? We'll get to it. There's some negative aspects to a $2,500 tube amp. Um, I should probably give you my take on Macintosh as a company. I believe Macintosh as a company back in the 70s and 80s, probably even the early 90s, where that's it. That's the one you want. Everyone, They're like the only high-end brand that most normies will actually be able to say, oh, I know that. They're good. That That's that's their thing. That's They're like, you go to audio shows, and then these European brands and German brands and Australian brands, you've never heard of fucking any of them. But you see Macintosh and you see the green and you see the chrome and you're like, I know that one. I know that. That's good. That's good stuff with the big blue, blue VU indicators. Like, yes. However, in the last probably 10, 15 years, um, I don't know if I, and I think old school Macintosh people will chime in because they're watching. Hello, old school Macintosh people. What are your thoughts on Macintosh in the last, like, 20 years? You think they've kept it up to snuff? You think they're just as good as it used to be? Or maybe has things just gotten, like, eh. Because I know someone who bought their preamp, and it was, it was a pre and, like, a CD player. And they were ridiculously expensive. And they all came in the split unit where it was, like, two separate chassis. And the remote control was, like, some Chinese rebrand, which had buttons that made no fucking sense. And the knobs in the front of the units felt like crap. And I, I just did very cheap and a little bit more expensive. And then this one. And why do the knobs feel like shit? Like it's it's like plastic. Is it metal? It, it probably is metal, but it doesn't. This one isn't bad. The load knob isn't bad. The volume knob is just. And I have to talk about the volume knob in more depth, which is why there's a wad a literal wad of poster tack on it. We're just going to put that right back. The owner will get this and they'll have... This was not loaned to him by Macintosh themselves, which means no one's watching this for Macintosh, which means, ah! Um, but we got to talk about that. The unit itself, this is the only balanced tube amp we have. I believe it's fully balanced, actually, because I was reading through the specs and everything and positivefeedback.com, which is a website that is known to give $3,000 USB cables positive feedback, Says, oh, it's great, it's great. And I don't trust anybody that puts positive feedback reviews on their fucking site. But, so here's the thing. 
it's balanced. So we've got balanced out here, and we've got the two XLRs, so you could do shit like this, and you could have the individual ones go, in case you want to sit far away from your headphones, that's a thing. Um, the QAS reference has that, and I have the Solaris on, and I have the Tor balanced on. So we're comparing everything. Um, these are running off of Gashelli DAX, both of these units. I'm still using the IFI Neo IDSD to feed this balanced, and those two things with the splitters are getting single ended. Uh, I still have the Topping A90 sitting right here as my reference for, for non tube solid state linearity. So I can go boop, 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 listen, boop, 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 listen. Um, the back of the unit, I'm gonna try, it's a 10 pound unit, so at least they give you the, the weight that you expect for $2,500. We have got unbalanced inputs here, RCA inputs. We have got the uh, World's Best cables. This is another new set of the ones they sent me. World's Best XLRs going in. There is a power control in and out. If in case you have a ton of Macintosh gear, you can use it to uh, jump one thing onto the other. I'm not sure if that's just a standard trigger control. I, it should be. And it uses actually not a big IEC plug that I would have expected because then you could buy a $10,000 cable. It just uses a figure eight cable, which is fine. And it claims to draw 50 watts. The actual build is pretty pretty nice. It's pretty nice. I Macintosh sort of can't change their aesthetic too much because they, that's what they're known for. So we've got this really nice metal box that contains the transformers in whatever form or in here. And we've actually got the uh, the diagrams of what's inside on top. It's very nice. I love that touch that's under glass. Then we've got a painted black box here and you have folded stainless steel with big ass gaps and like, they're not, eh, it's a little sharp, a little sharp here. Like you'd see they just fold it and it's all made it. I think Macintosh is New York, right? And I'm a New Yorker, so it's from New York, so it's fine. It's fine. Um, it's a goddamn mirror which means, hi, can you see me and everything about my face? Don't like that. It also picks up a lot of fingerprints, but you know, to each their own. If you want to have a mirror that, that holds your tubes, it kind of is cool looking at the, actually, this is quite dusty. I haven't, haven't gone through and dusted inside my tube amp lately. And I feel like you would have to do this quite a bit if you had one of these. So you, oh, so the Macintosh logo is on the side, which, makes me think they want you to turn this sideways but then you'd have it like on the i don't it's fine i guess they couldn't just put like a smaller one here it's got, it's got to be the full size they only make one put it right there so you have your balanced and unbalanced there's no switch i don't know i don't believe you can plug both in and then it'll be fine i, I really wouldn't i wouldn't plug both unbalanced and balanced in uh the front of this has a four-way switch. So here's where we get to some interesting, nice features. Uh, the load control, 32 ohm, 100 ohm, 250 ohm, and 600 ohm. Uh, actually, I had it set to 32 ohm because I was running the 909s, which are like 25 ohm. And you basically just pick whichever one of these is closest to the ohm load of the headphone you're listening to. What's the hemp's ohms? I'm sure Grado doesn't have it listed. I'm sure it's some sort of well, I'll put it to 100 just to be safe. But you, this actually does change the output sound and gain when you're using it. Now, there's a red standby light, which is off currently. There is the standby slash on button, which is a very nice raised stainless steel uh, black button, which is plastic. You boom, and it goes, and when it comes on, the green LEDs flash under the tubes, and eventually it's on. Just like that, slowly warms up with the LED indicator. This will just blink until it's ready to go. Then you have the volume control, which I'm going to peel off the... This is there for safety reasons, all right? I'm not being a dick. I'm not like, ha ha ha, Zeus is shoving shit onto a expensive amp because he's, he's a rebel. That's a safety wad. Hashtag safety wad. It's a new fucking new thing I just invented. Because I, there is a detent at the center of the volume that is designed for when you're going to control the volume externally, which is what I was doing with the IFI uh, Neo. You lock it to the center and it stays there and you're good. The problem is, and I don't want to blow up my hems. What headphones do I, am I okay blowing up? The Stellias? No. You know what? The Zeus can take it. Let's take the Zeus out for a spin. So I'm going to plug these in. Now these are wires I built. 
These are actually just quarter inch, 10 foot quarter inch patch cables that I cut in half and soldered adapters onto the end of it. I don't get to show them off nearly enough because not enough stuff uses the dual XLR, which I could have just, this was just the easiest way I could think to make speaker uh, headphone cables. I actually built a breakout box and everything, look. You can break up box, you can plug it in, you get your XLR, and whoop. I don't get to use these things nearly enough. But I bought these adapters, you can go boom, 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 right, left. Let's pick up the Harmonic Dynzeuses, uh, which are a headphone that absolutely does not need to be tubed. Oh my lord. But I'm going to tube it anyway. We're going to make sure we're on uh, vertical gain. We have to work quickly, though, because I paused the music. And if nothing's playing, this tube amp will turn off. They don't mention that. Like, I tried to find that as a feature. They don't mention it. But I was trying to, like, burn in the tubes. Like, when you get a new tube amp, you're supposed to use the tubes. It was, like, like 30, 40 hours before they come into their own. Because, like, as people don't believe in burning. Tubes is one thing that actually does need to go from new to working properly. And it just takes a couple, you know, six-hour-long bursts of just, just on till it all settles down. So I did it for that one, I did it for that one. This one, I turned it on, walked away, came back, it's off. The fuck? Turned it on. Walked away, came back, it's off. Okay, plugged in a set of headphones. Some headphone amps need a pair of headphones, you need a load to prevent it from turning, because, you know, it might damage something. Plugged it in, turned it on, it shut off. I had to plug in the own X5S player, having it play signal into it constantly while outputting through headphones constantly to have it be running. That's actually a good thing, because you don't want to leave your tube amps right. I, got, I know I, I left the Tor audio on all night, because there's no LED indicator. I would have to just see the little tubes glowing there, and I didn't. So I don't hate that, but if you pause your music for more than, I think it's an hour, roughly, it will just turn off. So good, bad, you decide. I just know that you have to actually have it running things to keep it going. So now we've got the Zeus. I'm going to keep it at 100. We're going to unpause. Pink Floyd's One of These Days is still playing. Let's shuffle around a bit. Holy fuck. The Magnum PI theme from Mike Post. So. Turn all this stuff down. Now, that's at Unity Gain. That is at the... Such a shitty wiggly knob. Like, I just... you. you after like this and this smooth machine thing and this and the dark voice being like this quality like volume knob, this feels like shit. Just is all I'm gonna say. It doesn't feel, it feels like a no, volume knob you'd get on a Walmart AM FM radio. So everything beautiful, like the stainless, ah, but whatever the fuck they're doing with these pots in here, just, just stop it, Macintosh. So we go to Unity Gain, right there, and I turn this up until I'm satisfied. The problem is, I'm at zero, and it's it's doing all right with these headphones. What headphones are blasting? Now it's just these. But I want a little more volume, just a little more volume. Like So I'm going to take this knob, I'm going to take it away from Unity, I'm going to bump it up until you know it goes from noon all the way to like, what is that, five o'clock? So, I'm going to do that with them in my hands, because I like my hearing too much. Oh my fucking god! So, that's basically muted. That's unity gain. And that's my headphones exploding. Five degrees past zero. That's what the safety watt is for. Because... Every one of the headphones I plugged into it can get loud enough. It's half a watt. It claims half a watt. It says half a watt. Five watts draw, 50 watts draw, half a watt it can produce at any ohm load because you could switch it over. That volume knob, I would fucking not live with it. Because you, you can't use it as a volume knob like you can on any other amp. Where just, It says you can. You If you had a fixed DAC output... You're using like the Musician Pegasus here, which is a you know, R2R DAC. You're fed at XLR, and you're like, all right, I'm going to you know play my music, and I'm going to... Where's my post still playing? I'm just going to turn this up. No sound. No sound. I'm starting to hear whispers that something's probably playing. All right, there's music quiet. Oh, that's not bad. And I've damaged my hearing. 
What? So, pause that again. I'm gonna put this to just under damage my hearing. I'm gonna take my safety wad. I'm just gonna wad it right there. Just, just keep that volume knob from accidentally, because it's not just a matter of me turning it. I, I'm, I don't know what the fuck happens if you turn that knob past that. I, I haven't tested with any headphone. I just know, oh God, and then never touch it again. So now I'm going to safety wad it, and I'll clean it off before I send it back. Or I'll, maybe I'll include this five cent piece of gunk to uh, protect the new owner of it, because holy shit, that is dumb. It's the least linear thing ever. It literally, this much is what the entire range of the knob should be. And then it would be like, okay, that's, that's lower, that's linear, and that's as loud as it goes. And that should be a giant turn of the knob. Not like, huh. If I just brushed against it, if the cat walked by and for some reason twisted, it'd blow up whatever headphones you have attached to it. So that's a little bit, a little bit disturbing. So I'm gonna lower this now. Which, if you buy one of these, this is how I would suggest running it. Because, like I said, the way I listen to tubes, the volumes I kind of like, and it's not super loud. You can get away with Unity Game, but it's always like, I don't know, every other amplifier, I can just I can just turn it however I want, and it stops, and it plays as fine, and it's fine. It plays fine. Why doesn't this play fine? Please play fine. Aloe Black, good thing. So here, we're at, like, negative 10 decibels here. That's completely locked in place. How does the tube amp sound, Zeo's timestamp? Let's make it negative 14 decibels. Well, I'm, I shit in it for the knob for long enough. I shit in it for some of the build. Like, this metal is just, like, sticking out. Like, it's it's fine. It's, it's, it's traditionally built. It sounds like a Macintosh tube amp. But, but... Does it sound $2,500 or, translated, $2,000 better than the Miltra? Or $2,200 or $300 better than $2,200? Better than TA-26? No. It's certainly a high-quality tube amp. I'm not going to deny the way it sounds. It, it does all the things I want. If I go back and forth between the topping A90 and this, you're like, oh, yeah, that's a tube. That's doing tube things. I love that it's doing tube things. But as the end of tube week, I just spent the entire... I spent, in real life, it was probably like six days. And for you guys, it's been like six days. So that's, that's pretty accurate. But just going from tube amp, to 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 solid state, to tube amp, to solid state, to tube amp. And I personally have to break down the price to performance ratio. And performance, this can perform. And you're buying the name, you're buying the looks, you're buying the green tube, you're buying it because you can say, holy shit, this guy's got a Macintosh tube amp. But when we're talking about tubes, you're talking about fucking the sound up. Like, that's the point of it. That's the, the whole job. I think I went over this in the TA-26 video. The whole point of a tube amp is to not have it sound like a perfectly linear topping A90, which is great. That's why I have Bursons, which are, you know, has op amps you could change, change the texture of the sound. And then you have the, like the Wild 11 Topaz, which is an amazingly warm, forward-sounding amp. And then you got that one, which is a, a phase, uh, whatever the I can't ever remember what the goddamn Erish does. And then you got the Singzer, which is Class A, and it's got, or most biased Class A, and it's like, oh my god, yeah. So all these solid state amps are here to get away from what the A90 provides, which is, you know, very, very linear. And if you want to get farther away, you literally move to the other side of my desk, where you have uh, X2O, Dark Voice, X2O, Solaris from Audio Valve, then you got the Tor. You, you can go tube to get as far away from clean, neat, and sterile as you want. And I, I know I, I like this is 2,500, which is much less than the 5,000 that the Solaris is. But the Solaris also could do everything. It could almost make bread. It does electrostats. It does speakers. It does. It has uh, balance control. It has high low gain. It has a fucking moving magnet co coil over. It's got a DAC built in. It's got. Zeos is not biased against expensive things. There's some expensive things I fucking love. I just, I look through it and go, okay, what's the absolute bottom line on this? 
is the prestige of owning a Macintosh tube amp worth two grand? Even a thousand. I just did the, um, the, the, what was the other Polish tube amp that I did for Joe? The, the one with the four tubes. I can't remember the name of it. I apologize. It'll be linked in the description. That was like $1,300. What was the name of it? So that's like half the cost of this. And I guarantee you, if it was still here and I could do AB, I wouldn't hear that much of a difference because I'm ABing between this and this and when I'm you know, obviously quarter inch because I can't go balanced, I'm not hearing that much of a difference. But I also have the ability to use an adapter to go from quarter inch to balance to see if there's that much of a difference when I go to balance on this. And there's not that much of a difference. So it's just a matter of like, Zeos has to weigh the, the benefits and the, and the cost. I'm here to count the coin. And the fact that you literally can't use it with its own volume knob means you have to have an external. You, that is very loud. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this down in the goop. There we go, lock that. That's more like it. It's expensive. It sounds rich and warm and wide. It does everything I expect from a tube amp. Remember what I was doing with timestamp? And then I do it in a time stamp. Because that's it, that's all I could say about it. It's a tube amp. It doesn't do miraculous things better than this obviously garbage $700 tube amp made in Poland. Where even is that? <laughs> or or this Chinese TA26 that just happens to have the most modern, you know, structurally built thing and the same tubes as a dark voice, yet sounds better than a dark voice. I think tube amps have a have a soft limit. Not a hard limit, a soft limit. Because maybe this tube amp would be, you know, the greatest thing I've ever heard if the tubes were changed. Because these are all Macintosh tubes. And I'm not going to be willing to sit here and, and swap out tubes again. Because then it's like, how many tube amps do you have to review today, Zios? Well, just one. But I have seven sets of tubes. So I've got to turn it on, let it warm up, put them in there. Then I, you know, listen for a good, solid 35, 40 minutes. And then turn it off, let the co tubes cool down, pull them out. No, 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 no. No, that's your job if you're crazy bastards. I did it with the dark voice. That was enough. Two tubes, one at a time for like three years. All right, I put this one in. Use it for a week. Do I like this one more? Yeah, it's got a little bit of a channel imbalance. Okay, shut it off. Next week, do another one. Or next two weeks, do another one. I think it's perfectly acceptable. I just don't know if I'd spend $2,500. Because it absolutely sounds like a great fucking tube amp. We pull this up here. What's what are this attached to here? The 909s. Give me 909s or give me death. Put the ship of bows in there too. I call them the ship of bows now because that's the the new thing. Oh my god! This has just become a headphone orgy on my desk more than anything else. So if we lower that, if we mute that, which is nice to have a mute button. Unplug this. Now I'm going to disconnect that, and then I'm going to disconnect this. I'm going to go to the tour balance, which I. <laughs> I think I might like the, 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 I think the tour is still winning this, by the way, because the tour is like 900 bucks. So it's a little more than the Miltra, but it's a balance, but it's also got the worst, you know, reach over the back, over the tubes to get to the actual plugs. But it's it made out of wood in, by a man in Ukraine. So it's just like, I love American made stuff. And I love that this is still being made in America and New York, I believe, I believe it's New York. And this is probably what they have to charge. I'm not blaming them for making it expensive. That's just, you have to do it. You're Macintosh. You can't possibly make it any cheaper. No one will take you seriously. That's the problem with like Porsche when Porsche decided to make a family sedan or BMW. That's why Ferrari hasn't made a fucking family sedan. You make supercars and only supercars or you'll lose respect. As an Italian, that's the thing. You gotta have that respect. 
But going back and forth between like, okay, oh, that's a Gungrave OST. It just sat like, honestly, if you if you sat me down, you put extensions on every one of these amplifiers and hid them behind a curtain, which I actually could do as soon as I can have you know guests over. Just take this and plug it in. Okay, it's balanced. Now it's balanced. Now it's unbalanced. You don't know. As long as it's volume matched, you could just plug into every one of those plugs. And I don't think you'd prefer any of these tube amps over any of the other tube amps. Because they all sound like good tube amps. It's, that's just the problem. Here, let's, let's do this. Plug this into here. I'll plug this in. That's too loud. Actually, on this song, it's damn close to that as well. And I know what people are going to say, because here's what people are going to say. I'm going to predict it. Oh, you can't judge that amplifier on a measly $800 DAC amp combo balanced out. It needs a dedicated, you know, $2 million DAC with, with you know, R2R quark gathering. And you got to be using at least the 50th fold of MQA to really get the true desire to... It's 40 for one flack. It's a damn good piece of equipment with the DAC. It's into this. It's world's best cables. They're affordable, yet still good. This is my opinion on everything. And it's always my opinion. It's my whole channel. You can't yell at me too much. It's my opinion. If I think, you know, let's think, what, what's, a, what's a hot take that I have that everyone... Oh, I'm a toilet paper on the backside kind of person. Let's fucking fight, bro. Right now, behind Denny's. I'll meet you behind Denny's. We'll have a fight. I just think that the toilet paper in the back is you pull it and you rip up like this and it tears against the roll and then you fold it and then you're good. If it's down in the front, you almost always have to reach over with a second hand to, to tear the toilet paper. It's very hard to do the one hand that you can from the back. F fight me. So that's that's an opinion. And I know a lot of people are not like, what? Toilet paper on the back side? No, 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 no. It's got to be at the front. And I, I could make a video and argue it because that's what I do for a fucking living. And I could say the same thing about $2,500 tube amps. At least, I will say this for the Macintosh, at least they know what they do with sound when it comes out of something. The WA-22, the big one, my complaint was I couldn't tell it apart from solid state. I couldn't tell it apart from solid state. What the fuck good is that? So this at least sounds like a tube. It's taking whatever advantage you can of these small little tubes and they, they I love to read the claims they have, by the way, every one of the wallpapers and tube week had glasses on, because that's just, you know, I just think for you guys. Uh, where's the thing I read? Hold on. The volume knob allows the MHA200 to be connected directly to music sources that only have a fixed volume output with a need it, with, without needing a pre-amplifier for volume control. That means they want you to use that fucking for volume. That's, that's a no. Um, conversely... You, if you're using components with a variable volume output, then the volume knob should be set to the center unity gain point and controlled by that. So they want me to put it to the middle where I think it's just slightly too quiet and then control with that, but it's slightly too quiet. So I gotta turn it up. So I gotta get a fucking safety wad. Safety wad. Hi Fi Plus, never heard of them. Where's that stupid positive feedback? Oh, all right. That. Pff. Uh, is a is a contender for the best tube amp manufactured to date and easily outperforms more complex and unnecessary feature encumbered designs loaded with unnecessary additional tubes. It has zero zero musical flaws to report and is nearly perfect in execution. If that doesn't sound like a, a fucking review you pay for, or that they just send you things because they know you're giving them an amazing review. Does perfect does positivefeedback.com ever give negative feedback? Do they have bad reviews? Because uh, people say I don't give negative feedback, but I totally fucking do sometimes. Wad. Um, wallpaper, by the way, in the description. Wrapping it up. Wrapping up. Here's a wrap up. Zeos, jump to this wrap up point because I just I'm angry because it costs so much and it 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 has these little. It's kind of like Grados. Like if I didn't get the Shipibo. Uh, yoke system with the headband with the beautiful padding and everything which again this is coming up in these actual pads that don't suck if I didn't get this I could complain endlessly about Grados in fact I probably still can because the wires are fucking attached but it's one of those things that I shouldn't have to fix 
Grado should just not suck. And Macintosh, you've got the sound, you've got the reputation, you're charging the right amount of money. So why are there flaws? Because that guy's like, oh, it's flaws, presentation, sound. But there's still like, there's things you could fix. The volume knob, the wiggle and the fucking, the whatever, the rate it's doing, the, 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 the gain control of like, it's like, what's the word? It's not exponential. It's, uh, oh fuck, oh fuck, it was, oh damn it, it's in my head. It's in the head of my head, the um, logarithmic, it's a logarithmic fucking gain. Where it just gets like to the power of one, to the power of two, to the power of three. It's like, fuck. I don't know what, if I had a, I, w I don't want to blow up a set of um, KPH 30 eyes because I respect those too much. But if you turn this to its maximum, all right, here's what I'll do. What am I wearing? Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. All right, the Neumanns are German. They can take it. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn that all the way down. I'm going to put these off my head a little bit, just 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 near my ears. We're going to lower this down as far as it goes. 98 decibels down. We're going to turn on Butthole Surfers, Hurdy Gurdy Man, which is a loud song. Put it up all the way. Barely hear it. I, that's loud. 30 decibels down. That's 30 decibels down. Actually, the last quarter of the fucking knob does nothing. It's already hit its maximum. It hits its maximum somewhere in like the two o'clock range. That's my biggest, my biggest complaint for the Macintosh. I don't mind, mind, I don't mind the way it looks. I don't mind the weird tube on one side, this on the other side, fucking logo on the right, even though you won't be able to see it. Like just peel this off and put it on the back of your car or something. Honda Civic Macintosh edition. This side's rather boring. Get, get your own loads right, which actually that's no, that's 150, so that'll be 100. You gotta just, you gotta know how to use this one. You gotta flip it around. You gotta never fucking touch that volume knob. In fact, if, if I could just yank this off and cover that so that it never can be accidentally fucking nudged, that'd be the best news for everybody. But yeah, oh, I guess I should probably put these on at some point during the review. Everyone was like, I forget what, what it was, but I was reviewing something. They were like, Zeus didn't even use anything high end. You gotta use high end stuff to review this. I'm like, it's not about high end. It's about things that I know and trust. How much something costs does not dictate whether I trust it to review a thing or not. Where am I? Just, just gotta give it that little, I'm leaving that at Unity Gain. Change off a of butthole surfers. Cage the elephant, ain't for the wicked. See, these actually work with Unity Gain. I'm at negative six here. Fine. Still scared of that knob. Yeah, they sound fantastic. They sound fucking fantastic. They sound fantastic. Little company. Those sound fantastic. That sounds fantastic. There's no, it all sounds fantastic. Maybe the headphones matter more than the actual tube amplification. Just getting into the tube realm is all you need. So yeah, I'm gonna clean up my goddamn desk now. It's gonna take me 40 minutes just to straighten this out and put all the wires back to my new, look at the new wire hanger things. Something was delivered. Um, here, I'm gonna stand by that. You got a, did I mention how red? That's like, I kind of wish that was like an on indicator because I'm a big fan of like when something is in standby, a dull red indicator. This does not do that. This does like keep you awake at night in your room red indicator. It's just, just what they do. It's just what they do. It, that would be more like for a, that looks like the sign of red you'd get for like an over voltage or an over heating protection, like warning, like, holy fuck, you fucked up. But it's just, it's just a standby thing. All right, I'm gonna go now, I'm gonna flip this off, this off, 
this off. That's going to go to sleep. Um, I'm going to power this down. And then I'm going to take the whole rack and I'm going to clean the rack off. And then that's it. Welcome to Z Reviews and goodbye. I have to clean this all off, get all my fingerprints off. It's literally like, it's, it's, it's just a mirror. Um, wallpaper. That one is just, she's wearing glasses. I don't know. Something about that and this just it just worked so download that in the description links to all the tube imps i reviewed for tube week oh shit all right what i'm gonna do i said i was i said it was, i thought about this about an hour ago there's gonna be a sound demo in the description a sound demo on the second sound demo channel i'm going to literally pick a set of headphones probably the he 600s honestly put them on the sound demo recording rig and I'm going to play the same song and I'm gonna plug into all the different things. And if you could hear a difference, then you can hear a difference. And if you want that in flack, when you join the Patreon or subscribe star and you get in the $5 tier, you get to see reviews early, participate in yard sales, and have access to the flack database of all sound demos I've ever done. Although a lot of the older sound demos are all compressed, but the new ones are all gonna be lossless flack. So, if you want to hear the difference between these, all these tube amps, I will have a video on that second channel. And you'll have access to the lossless thing if you're a supporter. So, go check that out. I guess I'm not doing that tonight. It's, I'm just, I don't have the head for it tonight. But I will set that recording rig up. Uh, I'll pick whichever set of headphones I think will do the best job. It might actually be a closed back because it'll keep the, maybe you... Maybe you, or maybe the 280 Pros, which are like a $100 headphone, but I don't give a fuck. They're amazing. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try to do something to, to demonstrate like, well, it has to be a balanced set. So can't, those won't work. I was going to do balanced, balanced, single, single, balanced. And then I'll even throw in that. And I'll just do one song, one track, plug it in, plug it in, plug it in, plug it in during the thing. And you could either go mad what, listening to it, or you can be like, oh, I absolutely totally hear a difference, Zeos. So look forward to that on the second channel. On the Z on the CO Sound Demo channels, and the reviews will be over there too. I'm gonna put some reviews up on that channel. So that's it. Like I said, Patreon subscribe star helps support this channel. Thank you to the owner of this who sent it to me before he got it. So I or he he got it, he packed it up, sent it to me, and now I just I didn't shit on it. I just it's it's it angers me with its absurdity sometimes. Like no one's gonna ever use the thing that I built for that. So it doesn't. But it's there, and it's there, so I can understand why it's there. But yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. It sounds real good. Does it sound $2,000 better than the competition? No. So that's it. Uh, $10, by the way, gets you in the behind the scenes private Telegram chat, where if you want to yell at me directly, call me an asshole directly, pay me $10, and you can do anything you'd like. Um, just at me in the chat if you want to get my attention. I'll answer any questions you have. You get access to the private swap meet, where if the owner is a patron and he wants to put this in the swap meet and he's like, ah, oh, Zeos didn't really think it was worth it, so give me $1,500 for it. And then, you know, you buy it, then you stay in that for life. And yeah, Hi-Fi Guides and the Hi-Fi Guides forum, and that's it. Thank God two weeks is over. We could just do something new next week or tomorrow. Two days. Two days, something that's not a fucking tube amp. Let's see what it is. Maybe it'll be IMs, maybe it'll be speakers, maybe I'll review the cat again. I don't know, we'll see.